one another and just to learn from God's word. Just want to invite you all to stand. We just want to begin this evening service in a word of prayer. So I just want to ask Anna if she can open us up tonight in prayer. Father, we come with your presence, Lord, and we just give you the praises tonight, Lord Jesus. We thank you, God, for all that you have done. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for what you are doing. Even when we can't see what is happening, you are working, Lord. Father, even when there is still one and there is trouble, we know that you are in control. And you stand there, God, that you are working all things, all things for our good, Lord Jesus. And we are putting our faith, our hope, and our trust in you, Lord. And Father, tonight we pray for a special anointing upon this service, upon the singers and musicians there, God. Even the hearts of the people, I pray that God that each one would have come at a heart of thanksgiving and praise unto you. We thank you for the intercessors, dear God. We thank you for the prayer warriors, those, dear God, that are interceding on behalf of others, on behalf of our nation and our leaders, Lord. May you strengthen them, Lord Jesus. Father, tonight, even as we hear from your word, I pray that God that we would be encouraged with Lord Jesus, we meditate upon that word, Lord God. I pray for those, Lord Father, whose hearts are like stones, dear God. I pray that you would give them a heart of flesh, Lord Jesus. I pray for those who have lost their first love. I pray that fire will rekindle in their hearts and they will return to you, Lord Jesus. I pray for those who are on the fence that they will make their minds up about who they are going to serve for the rest of their life. Lord Jesus, I pray for our young people, dear God. Lord Father, I pray for a generation that fears you, that loves you with all their heart, dear God. I pray for our men and women, that they'll be good examples, Lord Jesus. I pray, dear God, that our women will continue to intercede on behalf of their families and men, that they will be the priests of their homes, Lord Jesus. Bless all of our children, they are precious in your sight, dear God. Have your divine way. In Jesus' name I pray.
strength. That is taken from the famous Psalms, Psalms chapter 27. And it reads, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though an host should have come against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me, in this will I be confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. To behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me up upon a rock. And now shall my head be lifted up above my enemies round about me. Therefore will I offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing, yea, I will sing praises unto the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice, have mercy also upon me, and answer me. When thou saidest, Seek ye my face, my heart said unto thee, Thy face, Lord, will I seek. I have fainted, unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. So wait on the Lord, and be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. We want to thank Lord for that word of encouragement that we can hold on to and wait patiently on the Lord. And we know that He's going to renew our strength. We just want to sing out this wonderful song. I'm a living, breathing, walking, talking, moving miracle. And we thank God that He has done a great thing in our life. He's doing a great thing in our life. And don't let anybody you know, look down on you tonight because great is he that is in us and he that is in the world.
being in his house. The devil thought he won, but he did not won. Amen? Amen. I have victory through Jesus Christ. Amen. You know, many times the enemy will try to pull you down, take you down, cause things to bring you down. But he forgets we have somebody that is fighting for us. So I want to give God praise. I want to give God thanks for being in his house tonight. That I can praise him and I can give him thanks. You know, I thank God for all the blessing that he has blessed me with. Health and strength. And you know, at times, you know, sometimes you never want to come at your, your health. But we know we have a healer. Amen? Amen. Our God is a healer. He is a mighty deliverer. And tonight I know there are so many people that are going through struggles. There are so many people that are going through things in their life. But tonight I want to say that big brother Jesus is fighting our battle. Remember the battle is the Lord and the victory is ours. Tonight I just want to encourage you to continue to run this race. This race is not for the swift, it's not for the strong, but it's for those that endure to the end. And I have some news for you that we are almost at the finish line. And I just want to give God praise tonight for victory. I want to give him praise for deliverance. I want to give him praise for his blessing and for help and strength. And I want to declare tonight upon God's people deliverance. Peace upon your mind. Tonight your mind might be going uh, astray. Your mind might be wavering, might be feeling weak. But I declare peace in the name of Jesus. I declare deliverance upon God's people. I declare healing. I declare tonight that you are victors. Tonight you have the victory in Jesus' name. Tonight serve the devil notice and let him know that the blood of Jesus is against him. The blood of Jesus is against him. And tonight you want to tell him to take your hands off my family. Take your hands off my children. Take your hands off my husband, my cousins, my sisters, my brothers. In the name of Jesus. Tonight I just want to declare deliverance and healing and victory. Thank God for his blessing tonight. Thank God for each one that I hear. You declare it for your home. And just remember that Jesus is coming soon. Thank you. 
think of some folks that are viewing right now. And so there's Justin Ramla. God bless you, Justin. Mary Panarat. Good. Ram, Ramlochan. And uh, Stephanie Brown Suchit. And all the other viewers, good evening to you and everybody that is in the house. God's blessing on you. I want to share with you from the book of Revelations, having your Bibles now. You can turn to Revelations chapter 12 and verses 11. This has been a, a tremendous, tremendous series thus far. Victory in Jesus. Praise God. Let's read God's word together now. Trust that you have found it. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. Number one. Amen. And by the word of their testimony. That's number two. That's where we are for the past several weeks. And they loved not their lives unto the death. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. That is victory. Glory to God. Ultimate victory is in Jesus. As a Christian, born again, saved, washed in the blood, there's nothing that can defeat you. Absolutely nothing that can Amen. defeat you. You have total victory from the day you say yes to Christ. So the day your sins are forgiven, victory is yours and will always be. Glory. It doesn't matter what is happening in your life right now. You, you, you have the victory. You just declare that. And you stand on that. And, and that is the word of the Lord. Let us look to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you for all that are listening to God's word right now. And we thank you, Father, for all that we have been learning for the several months of, about victory in Christ. And bless God the message as always in Jesus' name. Amen. Please have your seats. Glory to God. We have been looking at how important our testimony is. Yes. And so we were looking at, at the book of Mark chapter 20. And we have been um, studying about what Jesus said to the man of Gadara that was formerly possessed with a um, legion of devils and demons. Remember I told you that the legionnaire in the Romans army could be up to 6,000 soldiers. So you are talking about a lot of demons that got hold of this man. But that encounter with Jesus Christ will change his life forever. Praise God. Regardless of how many there were. I mean, there were 2,000, some said, because there are 2,000 hearts that the demons entered into and they all ran down a cliff. Glory to God, just imagine. Those hogs could put up with them demons. <laughs> Even them hogs could put up with them demons. Those hogs are rather they rather die than live with them devils. <laughs> so they ran. They ran over a cliff. Yes, and they were all drowned in the sea. I can't imagine that one man living with all them devils. And we have these 2,000 pigs. There's no way. We can't live with them devils. <laughs> We can't put up with them demons. It's better we die than live with them demons. But he's been living with these demons for how long? I don't know. May have been years, actually. We do not know for, for certain. But what we do know, glory to God, that those devils will no match for Jesus Christ. Amen, somebody? Amen. Praise God. We're the 2,000. We're the 4,000. We're the 6,000. We're the 10,000. We're the 100,000. When a million demons, I want to tell you something, they will never a match for Jesus Christ. You get the devil and you get all his demons, whether they are in the billions, glory to God, still no match for our Savior Jesus. By one word, he cast them out, glory to God. Hallelujah. He gave them leave. He said, come out, come out. He gave them leave and immediately they had to obey because why? It is because God Almighty was commanding them. Because God Almighty was exercising authority over them. And listen, they had to obey the glory of God. That is Jesus Christ. Praise God. He cured diseases. Diseases were healed by the power of his word. He 
said to the leper, be thou clean, and he was clean. He said to blind Bartimaeus, he said, receive your sight, and he received his sight, glory to God. Yes, diseases had to go, demons had to go, even death was not a match for our Savior, Jesus, glory to God. He said to that girl, 12 year old, Jairus' daughter, he said to her, little girl, I say unto you, Talia Kakumi, rise up. And immediately she arose, praise God. In Luke chapter 7, he said to the dead man that was being carried out to the cemetery, the only son of his mother, he touched that coffin and he said, arise, young man. He that was dead rose up from that coffin. Glory to God. He said to Lazarus, after being dead for four days, he said, come forth. Death was no match for our Savior. Whether it's disease, whether it is demons, whether it is death, they no match for our Savior, Jesus Christ. Victory! Hallelujah! In Christ, give him praise tonight. Amen. 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 But as we are looking at our Bibles in verses 9, how be it? Because the man said to Jesus uh, that he wanted uh, to go with him, and Jesus suffered him not. Uh, he allowed him not and said, Rather, coming with me, I want you to go home. Uh, and I want you to tell them at home. I want you to tell them the great things uh, that the Lord had done for you and how he had uh, compassion. And he departed, verse 20 of uh, Matt chapter 5, uh, and began to publish it. Uh, yes, he spread the news. That's what he did. Glory to God. It was the hottest news uh, in the capitalist. Glory to God. Amen. It was the best seller that day. I tell you, he was on the front page of every newspaper. He was in the news day. He he was on the Express, he was on the Guardian, he was on CNC3, he was on TV6, he was on Ian Allen, I mean, hello somebody. He was in all the major news that day. A man that had been bound by the devil for so many, many years. A man that was living among the tombs. A man that was cutting himself. A man that was hopeless. A man that had been abandoned. Yes, this man all of a sudden now is a change and a transformed mind. He is now clothed after being naked for all this time. Now he is clothed and he is in his right mind. He ain't no insane man anymore, glory to God. And we have heard where no doctors can do anything for him. We have heard where no physicians can do anything for him. We have heard that no priest can do anything for him. No puppet could have done anything for him. No see a man, no see a woman, glory to God. No psychic and no medium and no papa. Hallelujah, thank you Jesus, amen. Nobody could do anything for him after all this time. But just one encounter with the man Jesus Christ. Now the man is transformed. Oh, I tell you, those newspapers were selling like hot bread. Glory to God. He spread the news. He let everybody know what Jesus Christ did for him. Oh, I tell you, your testimony is powerful. One of the most powerful tools that God has given to you as a believer in Christ. The moment that you were saved, the moment you were born again, it is your testimony. Your testimony is a powerful witness of what God has done for you. It is a powerful weapon. They overcame him by the word of their testimony. The Bible tells us how important is a testimony. How important is a witness if you have ever been to a court of law, or if you have looked at movies dealing with law, you will see that a witness is so important. Yes, a testimony could make the difference. Whether a man goes to jail or he does not. Whether a man goes to be hung or he does not. Whether a man will spend 20 years in prison or not. Whether he will serve a lifetime in prison or not, that testimony is important in the court. And our testimony is important in this world, praise God. It means a difference between life and death. Your testimony. 
testimony could save somebody tonight. Come on. Your testimony could release somebody from prison. Release somebody from the clutches of Satan and the power of the evil one. Your testimony can make a difference in somebody's life. Praise God. But a witness in a court has to be reliable. Praise God. Yes, incredible. A witness, yes, has to be truthful. A witness producing life-saving facts, I tell you, could make the difference for that person. That person that is charged, a credible witness. A witness would reveal the truth. A witness is one who would first hand information. They were there. They seen what happened. They heard what happened. They were on the scene of the crime. Hallelujah. That person indeed is so important. There is a humorous story about a big city lawyer and was representing the railroad in a lawsuit filed by an old rancher. You see, the rancher had a bull. It was his best bull. It was his prize bull. He would often take that bull, yes, for contest. And I tell you, that bull was doing real good. But the bull was missing from the section through which the railroad had passed. And so the rancher claimed, and this was his claim, that the bull must have been hit by that train. That's the only thing because the bull cannot be found. And he wanted them to be paid the value of that prized bull in full. Yes, he wanted the full money because this bull brought in, I tell you, a lot of gain. So the case was scheduled to be tried before the justice of the peace in the back room of the general store because it was a little, you know, a little town, not big at all. And as soon as the rancher showed up, the attorney for the railroad pulled him aside and tried to get him to settle this matter out of court. Oh, we, we don't have to take this in court and wait the court time and all of that. And come on, let's just settle this man to man. Let's just settle it right here. And so the lawyer did his best to, to settle that. He did his best selling job, pulled out every trick that he had. And finally, the rancher agreed on a settlement. And the settlement was half of what he was asking. The rancher was asking a certain amount, and the lawyer kept on, kept on, kept on until agreement was made. Okay, okay, we have a settlement here. You're going to get half. You're going to accept half of what, the, what is the bull worth. And so after the rancher had signed the release and took the check, the young lawyer couldn't resist gloating over his success. Yes. Telling the rancher the story says, you know, I hate to tell you this, old man, but I pulled one over you in right here, right here before your eyes. I pulled one over you. He said, he said to the rancher, he said, I, I could win this case. There's no way that I could win this case because you know why? And the rancher didn't know all that was happening about this train and passing through his land and all of that stuff. And then, so the lawyer said, you know what? When that paper, uh, train passed through, the engineer was asleep. <laughs> the engineer was asleep. And uh, the, 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 the fireman was in the caboose when the train went through your ranks that particular morning. I didn't have one witness to put on the stand to testify. So what I did really was I bluffed you. Well, the old rancher replied, well, I'll tell you, young fellow, I was a little worried too about winning that case myself because that bull came back this morning. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Folks, I tell you, if they had someone who, was, who could have been a witness, amen, would have been a different story, amen. 
But there were no witnesses at all. So they came up with their own version. Amen. They came up with their own idea. And this is what is happening today. If we hold our mouths as believers in Jesus Christ, people will never know the truth of the gospel. Yes, if we don't tell them, then they're going to get their story from all kinds of sources. And they with unreliable sources. And I want to tell you something. There are a lot of, of wrong information out there about who Jesus is. Come on, somebody. There are a lot of misleading information out there about who Jesus is. Some say he's just a prophet. Oh, one of the prophets. My Bible tells me he's more than a prophet. He is king of kings and he is lord of lords and he is God incarnated in the flesh. Uh, John chapter 1 verses 14, we beheld the glory. The Bible tells us here was Jesus Christ. He was robed in human flesh. The word dwelling among us. John tells us Jesus incarnated. Glory to God. So folks, if people do not hear from you and me, praise the credible witnesses, reliable witnesses, truthful witnesses, those that have a first and not a second hand experience. Listen, second hand experience ain't going to work. You got to have a first hand experience about Jesus Christ, praise God. You got to have a first hand encounter, amen, about who Christ is. Nobody could save you, amen. I am saved, but I can't give you salvation. No second hand experience. You got to have the same first hand experience that this boy had behind this pulpit. Because I tell you, I didn't get no second hand experience. That night, I accepted Jesus personally, praise God. Hallelujah. My mommy didn't do it for me. My daddy didn't do it for me. My brother didn't do it for me. My sister didn't do it for me. My pastor didn't do it for me. I had to do it myself. It was a first hand experience that I have. And that's why I'm saved today. Second hand experiences can't save nobody. You can impart salvation to nobody. But you can tell them, amen, how you got saved. Praise God. You can tell them about the one who can save. And the only one who can save. Who is Jesus Christ. Give him praise, somebody. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. So we are the credible witnesses. That is why the Bible says they overcame him by the word of not somebody testimony. Don't know the scripture tells us enough. It is not somebody testimony. What somebody say, hear say, come on, hallelujah. No, it was the word of their testimony, hallelujah. Individual testimony about what God has done for him. That is why, folks, that those have come to feet within the churches, those that are not genuine in the churches, could never experience victory in their life. And they will never be able to make it. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I was telling you about Simon the sorcerer. He wanted something that Peter had. Yes, when Peter was casting on it, it was, he thought it could have been bought with money. And then Peter said, your money and you will go to hell. Come on. He had to repent. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. For folks, this thing cannot be brought by dollars and cents. No. Hallelujah. It is brought by the blood and only the blood of Jesus. You were came in by the blood of the Lamb. Give him praise tonight, somebody. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. You know, Jesus met this man. And I've been looking at that and I realize that ain't no accident at all. Amen. Hallelujah. Say it again. Wasn't no accident that Jesus ended up, amen, where this man was. In fact, you look at the text before, and I was, I was sharing with you about a difficult time they had getting over on the other side where this man was. Jesus said, man, let's, you get over on that other side then. And so this great storm came upon them, and they thought they were going to die. They had to go through literally hell in order to save this man from hell. My goodness, sir. Their lives were at stake in order to reach. Sometimes reaching the loss ain't no easy thing, folks. I understand that. We have been there with crusades upon crusades, street meetings. I can't give you the number, all kinds of door to door visitation, folks. Winning the loss is not for the weak and the faint hearted, no, sir, at all. Winning the loss is for those who themselves have been saved and have a 
passion to see people come to know Jesus Christ. Glory to God. And, and the disciples had a hard time. But Jesus allowed them to go through all of that. Because what? Because there was a man that was hurting. There was a man that was desperate. There was a man that was lost. There was a man that was bombed by the devil. There was a man that they tried the chain and he broke the chains. There was a man living among the dead. There was a man that needed salvation. There was a man that needed deliverance. And nobody could have helped him. And Jesus said, listen, I must get to that man. Glory to God. The disciples did not know why it was that they had to be rowing and rowing that boat to try to, to steady that boat. They don't know why that storm came. They don't know why they were having a hard time to get on the other side. The devil tried everything to prevent them. The devil brought that storm over, oh, I tell you. Yes, the devil tried uh, to chop their spokes. The devil tried in every way to discourage them uh, so that they wouldn't get on the other side to share the gospel of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, but I want to tell you something. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise God that through the strength and the grace uh, of our Savior, amen, that storm uh, was come. And I'm here to tell you that whatever storm that you are going through in your life, uh, Jesus can calm the storms. Amen. Jesus can calm the winds. Right now, my brother and my sister, praise the name of the Lord. Your life might be that tossed here and tossed there. But I'm telling you, Jesus comes and he says, as he said to those waters, as he said to the Sea of Galilee, yes, be still, peace, be still. And immediately there was a calm. Lord, I tell you, Jesus is coming on the scene. And he can speak into your life right now. And calm those storms and calm those fears. I know so many of you are having fears tonight. Even Christians today are living and bound by fears. And fear is of the devil. It is a spirit of Satan. If you are living in fear tonight, it is not God's will. God wants you to be living in fear. But he wants you to be living in power. That means in confidence. Glory to God. That means in assurance. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The devil wanted to still fear in us and paralyze us and shut our mouths up so that we wouldn't testify. Amen. About who Jesus is. He want to take down the light from the church. Uh, folks, uh, but I tell you, the only thing uh, that can save this world uh, is Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, and you have that experience uh, and you must testify what the Lord has done for you. Give me praise tonight. So Amen. Hallelujah. So, it was no accident that Jesus met that demon-possessed man that day. Do you know what the dictionary defines of accident as the dictionary says it's an unforeseen event or one without apparent cause this is an accident by definition of the dictionary any christian who understands the sovereignty of god will immediately determine from this definition that there is no such thing, and I stress that this evening, that there is no such thing as an accident with God. Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah. That's why with God you don't need any insurance. All you need is assurance of salvation. Yeah. Give him praise, somebody. Yeah. Amen. Ain't no accident. Ain't no accident yeah. with God. Amen. Hallelujah. Ecclesiastes makes it very clear. Amen, somebody. In Ecclesiastes chapter 3, there's a season. There is a time, yes, for everything under the sun. Glory to God. Amen. No accidents at all. Hallelujah. In other words, nothing is by chance. As far as our God is concerned, everything is happening according to his plan. Praise God and to his purposes. Glory to God. So there was no accident that Jesus ended up where this man was in his community, in his hometown, where he was, glory to God. Jesus
Jesus made that trip and he had the disciples make that horrible trip just because of one man. Amen. One man that needed salvation. One man that needed eternal life. One man that needed to be set free. Praise God. Jesus came for that one man. It is like the cowboy who goes to buy some life insurance. And so the broker asked him if he had any accidents in the past year. To which the cowboy replied, no, but I'll tell you what happened to me this past year. I was kicked by a horse. I was chased by a raging bull. And I was bitten by a snake. And that had me laid up for a while. When he John said, well, what the accidents? To which the cowboy replied, no, they did it on purpose. <laughs> Hallelujah. For those of you who are listening, right now, on the live, and those of you who are in-house, it is no accident that you are listening to this message. This message is not an accident. This series is not an accident. I do not take none of my messages lightly. Because God does not take his word lightly. Amen, somebody? A lot of thought, preparation, prayers, time goes into these messages that we have been receiving at Power and Science Ministries. For all these years, I bet it should be the same for every born again church and every born again pastor that seeks to uh, share the message of Christ they will tell you the very same thing. So it is no accident that you are hearing the word of God tonight. It is no accident that you are here in the house right now because God is saying that he has a plan and he has a purpose in your life. Some people may have heard of themselves that they are accidents that they were not planned their parents had them by an accident and so that's not nice for a child to hear that you were an accident we were just planning to have three but it just happened to be four or we're just planning to have six you just happened to come along <laughs> Oh, it's not nice for a child to hear that. But even though that may be your case, sir, if that might be your case, ma, if that might be your case, friend, I want to say with God, there was no accident. Praise God. Your mom and father may have said that. Your neighbor, your friend may have said that. Just to taunt you. Yes, just to make you miserable. But I say to you, with God, there is no accident. Do you know what the Bible tells us in the book of Psalms 139 and verses 14? The scripture says that I am fearfully and I am wonderfully made that has been born since Adam to now born upon planet Earth. It does not matter the circumstances surrounding their birth. There is no accident. God is the one that fearfully and wonderfully formed that fetus in that womb, praise, delivery, and brought it to maturity and gave uh, you life, praise God, amen. And you came out of your mother's womb and you came out breathing, glory to God, hallelujah, amen. It is because God had planned you. You are by, you are no accident, what, accident whatsoever at all. This man was not an accident. Many people have thought that this man was uh, truly a nuisance to the community. Some may have been praying that he'd been dead. Because some of them, the, the community members couldn't sleep with the racket that he was making. He was making big racket. He was howling like a wolf sometimes. You can hear this man just screaming uh, in the middle of the night and wake up people and whatnot. The hunting songs and guess where it was coming from? The cemetery. My goodness. Uh, I mean, people were scared even to pass by the road uh, that, that, that led to that, to that cemetery. You see, because of this man and his violence and whatnot, uh, and 
they must have said that this man, you know, we wish that he was not born and he wished that he was not upon pirate. But even in such a vagabond, but even in such a miserable man, but even in such a man uh, that was possessed with all these devils, uh, Jesus had a, a different plan for him, praise God. A different purpose in his life. Uh, glory to God. You see, God uh, had a mission for him. That man never knew that mission. Folks, he never thought of such a mission. He never thought that he could have been a, a testimony, glory to God. He never thought in a, in a million years that he would have, could have been an instrument that God could have used to transform people's lives, to transform his family's life, to transform his community, and to transform his village. He never thought about that, that God could use a wretch like me. God could use such a person like me that is hopeless. God could turn it around. But folks, I tell you, hallelujah, God's had something different in mind. Praise God. The Lord will save him. The Lord will deliver him. The Lord will clean him up. The Lord will break the chains, not just the physical chains I'm talking about, but I'm talking about spiritual chains. There are people that are chained, not physically, folks, but there are people that are chained emotionally. Yes, there are people that are chained spiritually. And these chains are just as real as if a man were bound by physical chains. They're even worse. They're even worse than somebody who is physically chained. Yes, and Jesus came to set the captives free. Isn't so this what the Bible tells us? Glory to God. Hallelujah. He came to set the captives free. He came to set people like this man who are, who are bound by the devil, who are bound by habits uh, that you cannot break tonight. You are bound by shackles. Uh, you are bound by lust. Uh, you are bound by marijuana. You are bound by drugs. Uh, you are bound by bound by immorality. I tell you that Jesus came to set you free. Jesus came to deliver you. Jesus came to break the shackles. Glory to God. It is no accident that you are listening right now to the word of the living God. Give him praise tonight, somebody. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. This man, you would say, was a madman. Literally a man that was insane, driven mad by what? By devils and by demons. You know, there is a test that was used years ago. Doctors in the old times used this test to determine the sanity of their mental patients. And so it was like this. The patient was placed in a room with a sink. And the faucet was turned on. And the stopper that you have, right, on your sink somewhere. So you can fill up that bowl and you can have water to, you know, to wash your, your dishes or your clothes and so on. So there was a, a stopper was put in the drain hole until that sink overflowed. And the patient was, was then handed a mop and the door was closed. Now this was to test the sanity of those patients, whether they're going to remain some more or whether they're going to be released. And so if the patient had enough sense to shut off the water, pull the plug, and then mop up the water, he was considered capable of returning home. Yes, he was not mad. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Because if you see a sink overflowing with water, there is a stopper in that sink, there is a faucet running. What are you going to do if you see? Ain't you going to shut the first thing, shut the faucet off? And then you're going to pull that plug so that water will run out and not overflow anymore. Amen. Yes. But on the other hand, if the patient mocked, 
like crazy. Yes, water overflowing from the sink. And they give this fellow a mop. And he begins to mop like crazy. He does not think about shutting off the faucet. He does not think about pulling the drain plug. Then something got to be still wrong with this fellow. He was still considered insane. And you know what? He had to be detained a little longer in that madhouse, in that mental institution. I wish the doctors and nurses were in St. Angela to be right now because they could implement such a simple test that will save the, 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 the government millions of dollars. In fact, I think I'm going to try to sell it to them. Amen. Make some money myself with a simple test. Glory to God. I'm wasting money with having all kinds of psychiatrists and psychologists and whatnot. All right? A simple test like that will need to do. <laughs> Hallelujah. But folks, there are a lot of people in this world like that fellow using his mop and mopping like crazy and could never ever come to a conclusion. Could never come to an end because they are mopping and mopping but they can't dry up the water. Because uh, as much as they are mopping, the water still is there and still is overflowing. But these people are not in mental institutions. They are not in the mad house. Some people says, you know, there are more mad people outside than there are those inside. Because the kind of things that you see people do and how they behave, you say to yourself, boy, some people in Satan's better off than them. Because the way that they behave. And there is some truth in that. There are people who we consider quite sane, yes, quite sane, but they are plagued by insanity. They are plagued by their own devils, yes, sir. because they haven't figured out up to today, up to today, how they can stop the flooding in their lives. They haven't come to an answer. They haven't come to a conclusion. All they are doing is mopping and mopping and mopping and mopping. But they haven't come to a conclusion, a solution. How could I stop this water from flowing? Folks, they are not people like that. That's how they are living their, their lives. Because why? They have demons. Yes, sir. And they even don't realize that they have demons and they are controlled by demons. Yes, and they are oppressed by demons. They even do some folks uh, that might be in churches that are just the same as well. Uh, plague by demons. Uh, do not be surprised. Do not be surprised. Jesus, uh, I tell you, in his own personal gang, in his clan, among his disciples, uh, there was one that had a demon. In fact, Jesus said he's a demon himself. And this man ate with Jesus sucked with Jesus, traveled with Jesus, yes, close to Jesus. He was so trusted that he was made the treasurer of the church. Folks, when you have a treasure in the church, must be a trusted person. Trusted at being a meeting, trying to solve problems in churches and whatnot with the treasurer in the middle of the scandal and whatnot, taking the church money and spending it and all kind of nonsense taking place. It's not an easy thing. All right, institutions too. The man that wrote the first must be a trustworthy man. Similar to our country. All right, taxi, I mean, call him Bert. Call him Bert. All right? Excuse me, please. All right. Yes, he must be a trusted man. We must have trust in this man because he holds the purse of the nation. And we are not talking about pennies, my friend. No, 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 we are not talking about pennies. We are talking about billions of dollars of our GDP at this time is nearly 50 billion. It used to be more, but because of the COVID and things like that now. 50 billion dollars, I don't know where to start to count. But he holds the purse to all this money. He must be a trusted man. Yes, must be trusted, you see. And so, there are people like that. They have demons, personal demons. Demons of greed, 
I say this so often that you would know a greedy man. A greedy man is characterized as never being content. Never being content. Always wanting more. A greedy man will never have enough. A greedy man house will never be big enough. A greedy man will never have enough cars. He will always want another car, another car to add to the fleet. It does not matter if you don't drive them or not. That is not the issue. The issue is I see it, my eye open up so it looks nice, I've got to bring it home. And pack it up there, folks. Why? It is because of greediness, somebody. It is never enough for a greedy man. Land is never enough, money is never enough, nothing is never enough for a greedy man. He is never contented and he's not a happy soul neither. He is a miserable person. Where is a man who has just some few pieces of clothes on his back? He don't have much, he just have a little tin roof over his head and just some, some cheap curtains in his house. He don't have no big setup, a, a, a mattress. He probably just have a little old mattress. No big thing at all. But I tell you, that man is a happy man. That man uh, will enjoy a good night rest, the Bible tells us. Uh, he will sleep comfortably, whereas the greedy man, he can't even rest at all. Uh, the greedy man will suffer from ulcers. Uh, yes, uh, the greedy man will have anxieties. Uh, the greedy man will can't sleep because somebody always wanting to come to steal from me. The greedy man has to be surrounded by bodyguards. Uh, yes, around his house, even during the day, he has to have bodyguards. Uh, he is living like that. Uh, why? It is because he has demons and he does not know it, folks. It is a terrible thing. He is mopping and mopping, and yet uh, he cannot finish mop that water at all. They are all kind of personal demons uh, that people have and they have not figured it out. Uh, they are plagued not only by greed, uh, they are plagued by lust. Uh, they are plagued by power. There are people today in this world that have demons of power. Listen to me very carefully. You will see those and you will know those who are prayed by demons of power. They will do anything under the sun to keep that power. They will not want to lose the reins of that power. They will oppress people no matter what uh, to remain in power. They will rob from people to remain in power. They will cheat from people to remain in power. They will want to rule by fear with an iron hand uh, just in order to keep that power. You see folks, they have demons of power. And they are mopping, uh, mopping the water and the, from their lives. And still, they cannot do it at all. Because why? It is because that they need the Savior Jesus. The one only who can deliver them from their own personal demons. Could I hear amen, somebody? Amen. Praise God, hallelujah. There are others, and I'm closing, there are others uh, who have personal demons uh, of stress. Personal demons of anxieties. Personal demons of frustration. Personal demons of hate. Personal demons of jealousy. Personal demons of alcohol. Personal demons of marijuana. And personal demons of drugs. And so folks, they are busy trying to mop the water from off their hearts floor. But the more that they mop, is the more that the water is coming in because you can never do it by yourself what you need you need jesus christ my friend to deliver you from those personal demons uh, that you are bound by praise god only christ uh, and only christ uh, could set you free tonight uh, the choice is yours uh, the decision is yours to make uh, you can carry on as you are today and end up finally in a devil's hell uh, or you can trust in Jesus Christ and be delivered from demonic possession and oppression. Glory to God like this um, maniac here of Gadara. Praise God. And you can have a new life in Jesus Christ. And God will give you a testimony. Praise God. Amen. 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 A testimony that can change lives and transform lives. Folks, the people of this world don't have that kind of testimony. Amen. Praise God. But you have it if you're born again. As I said before, one of the most powerful tools that everyone who have trusted in Christ possess immediately. It is a testimony. You can't beat that back at all. To 
the church, and I say this, folks, very humbly, because you know that I'm all about for theology. But the folks don't, the church don't need no more theology. Honestly, we don't need no more theology. We have plenty of theology. What the church needs more of is a testament. Come on, somebody. Some cases, the entire church has lost their testimony. When you hear pastors behind this pulpit having affairs, the church has lost its testimony. Come on, somebody. Come on. When you hear deacons living in immorality, they have lost their testimony. When you see elders by a rum shop, the churches have lost their testimony. They have theology. They have great theology. But they don't have a testimony at all. When you see some leaders cussing by the roadside, the church has lost their testimony. Are you with me, somebody? Yes, sir. When you see their cheatings and lyings from the church, it has lost its testimony. We have theology. Yes, no shortage at all. People know more Bible than ever before, ever before. I am shocked. Sometimes even I can answer questions that they come up with. They know so much, so much, but they experience so little. Experience so little. Plenty knowledge. But the experience of the transforming power of God in their lives, they're yet to experience. You have a testimony. Don't be ashamed of it. Don't be ashamed of what Christ has done to you. You stand up and tell your testimony, praise God. And you will overcome the devil. Glory to God. And somebody could be saved. Bow with me in prayer. Father, we thank you again for another fantastic message coming this series, Victory in Christ. Praise God. Hallelujah. You turned around that man. Amen. Amen. A man given up by society. A man plagued with demons, personal demons, thousands of demons, a legion of demons. Was it that man? Yes. But glory to God, hallelujah. You came and you cast all them devils, amen. The man that was mad became sane, glory to God. And immediately you gave him what a lot of people don't have. It's a testimony, amen. A testimony of the grace of God. A testimony of the life-changing power of God. A testimony of the ability of God. A testimony of what Christ can do to any soul, amen that truly believes in him. Praise God. And he went out with a testimony in hand. Amen. With a, a heart change and a testimony in his right hand. He went. And I, glory to God, he published that throat. Praise God. This entire whole town, every home, everybody knew of the power of God. And I'm certain there were men being converted that's why Jesus felt no need. Even then in the center lead, he could have stayed. But he knew, amen, he had someone that was going to testify. Someone that was going to witness. Jesus knew that that man will do the job. And so, Father, though you're counting on the church, you're counting on the members of Power and Sign Ministries to testify. Yes, Father, you're counting, dear Lord, on each baptized member of Power and Science Ministries to testify. Yes, to testify where they are. Where they are. That testimony in the whole town is important. It's so important. Before we go anywhere else, must be a testimony at home. Before we testify anywhere else in this world, we must testify at home. And if we can't testify at home, we are no good to testify in the world. No. We got to testify at home. That testimony must be by our lips and it must be by our life. Thank you, Father. Praise God. Energize us, strengthen us, give the boldness. Some people here have such a great, great everybody has a great testimony. But some there Lord have dramatically been saved. We heard from here on Sunday morning, Father. A man with a powerful, dynamic testimony that can reach hundreds of people for Jesus Christ. Our brothers are in the Bible. But help them to understand and help us to understand. We don't have to know the 66 books of the Bible for God to use us. 
Amen. Because God saved that man. We have so many others who have a spectacular testimony. Glory to God of what you have done, dear Father. All you need to do is to share that. Share, 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 share. Many will be comforted. Thank you in Christ's name. Everybody says, Amen. Praise God. Thank you for sending your prayer request this evening. And we certainly will be praying right now. And so we have a request from Sadhguita for CXC on Tuesday. All right. Didn't know that. CXC is on Tuesday. Anybody else? We do it CXC here in the house on Tuesday. All right. Just Sadhguita. She's very special, I must say. Also pray for a family for protection. Father, are we just lift up our system? I'm certain there must be more. Dear Lord, that are having these exams and I pray for success. Our sister has found herself, dear Lord, in the house of the Lord, diligently, dear Father, and we know your divine favor is upon this young lady and that she would excel, amen. And for her family, a second request, do protect them as not only their family, but all this reason in this evil time that we are living in. Protect us not only from COVID, but protect us from oppression, dear Lord Jesus. Protect us, dear Father, from sicknesses and diseases. Protect us, dear, dear Lord, from every work of the devil. That's for a friend's daughter who is in the hospital. Her name is Alicia Mangu. And we pray, dear Lord, for her. Dear Lord, that you would visit her in the hospital, dear Father. Lift up and raise up and bring healing. Praying also for Vanny and the entire family. Continue to be with our sister. Continue to supply their every need in Christ's name. Amen and amen. Well, we're getting ready to take up tonight's collection with the offering bearers. Would you come with the baskets as we give the evening offering? Praise God. I'm reminded of the great things that are happening. And glory to God. This Sunday, first Sunday of the month, communion. And so we encourage everybody to be in house. But if you cannot be in house, um, then you can join with us uh, right in your home and where you are with the, with the Lord's table. So get your emblems, all right? Get yourself ready. But we really want you uh, to first choice is to be in the house of God. Amen. Let nothing at all keep you back. You know what the psalmist says? I'd rather be a doorkeeper in, that, in the house of God than to dwell anywhere else upon planet Earth. And I agree with him. Hundred percent, amen. Then Sunday evening, right, for the first time, yeah, we having a, a Christmas village light up right here. I don't know if it's a big village or a small village or a medium-sized village, but it will be a village, amen. Hallelujah. But the most important thing is for us coming together for a wonderful sweet fellowship and enjoying a special moment with the church. So Sunday evening, six thirty, refreshment will be served there after looking forward to it is really really super super exciting even on sunday morning remind you of uh, uh, more announcements uh, for the uh, month let's all stand shall we so would you lead us in prayer this moment as we about to take up the collection
appreciate that. Praise the Lord. And uh, refresh comes tonight as well. Praise the Lord. Could you tell us what we have? I would like our viewers to know what they're missing. <laughs> Amen. Salad. Oh, okay, okay. Tuna salad. I tell you folks, praise God. Amen. And tuna ain't no cheap fish at all. I tell you that. Amen. Amen. So we're getting the best at our one science ministries. Appreciate that, my brother. Clyde, Sister Emily, and for dessert, last week we had the berry cupcakes, and that is one of my favorites. And tonight we're having donuts. Oh, God bless. Brother Keisha will also give thanks for those as well. God bless you. Father, we just want to thank you, Lord Jesus. Father, thank you for what you have done tonight, Lord Father. Thank you for your mercy, Lord Jesus. Father, I pray, Lord Father, that you bless your hand that provide tonight, Lord Jesus. Father, I pray, Lord Father, that you open special blessings to the Lord Jesus. Father, I pray that you take home everyone safe, Lord Jesus. Father, and I pray, Lord Father, that you really need to come and apply something, Lord Father, that what has been done tonight, Lord Jesus. Father, and so we meet again, Lord Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Blessings to all of you all. You have a great evening, and make sure that you have some food and refreshment before you leave. So see you then on Sunday morning. God willing for communion. Good night, everyone.